While we are talking about raw milk, I wanted to share a study that I found really interesting. There are multiple studies like this in the literature. Um, but as I was doing some research for content for Instagram, I came across a number of uh, literature reviews and studies which are observational, and I'll talk about that in a moment, looking at raw milk. So you can see in this study, raw cow's milk and its protective effect on allergies and asthma. And they found that they present the current understanding of the protective effect of raw milk on allergies and asthma. There's a significant body of epidemiologic evidence that consumption of raw milk in childhood and adulthood in farm, but also non-farm populations can be one of the most protective factors against allergy and asthma. I think this probably has to do with the probiotic compounds found in raw milk. Certainly when raw milk is not handled properly, it can be a source of food contamination. But for me, if I can get it from a good source, the benefits outweigh the risks. If you can obtain raw milk, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. But there is really clear, good evidence that raw milk is beneficial and protective for hay fever, eczema, asthma, and other allergic conditions, probably because being exposed to those bacteria in the milk as a child and adult is beneficial for our immune system, for our gut microbiome, the delicate interplay of these things throughout our lives. So raw milk is great. Understand the protective sourcing. Some people, when I talk about this epidemiology with regard to raw milk, will point out that I am not a fan of epidemiology with regard to vegetables and say, look at this guy, he's a hypocrite. So I wanted to clarify that position. Uh, I wanted to clarify that position in this moment as well. When I look at epidemiology regarding vegetables, there are a couple of factors to take into play that I think make that epidemiology highly suspect and highly at risk of being confounded by what we call healthy user bias and unhealthy user bias. Specifically, if you look at the epidemiology regarding vegetables in human health or meat in human health, there are disparate results across US, uh, Western, and Eastern populations. This makes me highly suspect that there's something else going on. I don't believe meat is good for Asians and bad for the US, and I don't believe that vegetables are necessarily good for humans based on epidemiology studies that could be confounded by what we call a healthy user bias. There is a real compelling narrative that must be disproved with interventional studies here. When we look at epidemiology, we must be aware of the possibility of healthy and unhealthy user bias. We must look at the people eating vegetables and ask, is there a consistent narrative over the last 70 years I would argue there is that says vegetables are healthy. So the people who eat more vegetables are also likely to be people who are doing more healthy behaviors. Could that be having an effect? Could that be making the vegetables look like they are beneficial to those people when in fact it is their healthy behaviors? Yes, and if you've listened to any of my content, you know there are many uh, analyses of this epidemiology that shows exactly that. Specifically in the UK shopper study, if you look at both vegetarians and omnivores, we find that when the healthy behaviors are accounted for, they both live the same amount of time, meaning that there was no protective effect of eating more vegetables or excluding meat from the diet when they looked at which groups were doing healthy behaviors. The omnivores who had healthy behaviors lived a long amount of time, and the vegetarians who had healthy behaviors lived longer than the average person in the UK as well. So the protective effect appears to be from the protective effect appears to be from healthy behaviors, not necessarily from the absence of eating meat or from the inclusion of more vegetables in the human diet. There are also many other multiple, there are also many other studies I've talked about that are interventional studies looking at the inclusion of larger or significant amounts of fruit and vegetables in the diet versus lower amounts of fruit and vegetables or lower amount or zero fruit and vegetables in the human diet. And there are many interventional studies which are much more revealing than these epidemiology studies, which suggest that those vegetables are not necessarily protective for humans. And the results of those studies many times suggest that that inclusion of fruit and vegetables didn't necessarily have a protective effect for those humans. I've shown those interventional studies many times in the past. So all of this data together makes me highly suspicious of the epidemiology regarding vegetables in human health. And I think it is highly likely that it is confounded by healthy user bias and unhealthy user bias. When I look at epidemiology like this regarding raw milk and its protective effect on allergies and asthma, the first thing I think is, well, maybe it's being on the farm. Maybe more people on the farm are drinking raw milk and this is a type of healthy user bias. But in the abstract, they say they have control for this and that people who are not on farms also see a benefit associated with raw milk. So I can't come up with a more compelling hypothesis for why raw milk is protective for humans than the fact that it is actually protective for humans because of the probiotics in the milk. 
The difference here is that when we are looking at epidemiology, we must be careful to account for the possibility of healthy user bias and unhealthy user bias. And when, when I look at epidemiology, if I can't draw a compelling story or I can't figure out where the healthy user bias or unhealthy user bias could be confounding the study, it makes me much more suspicious. That it makes me much more confident that the association may be true. The association still needs to be tested with interventional studies. We can never draw causative inference from this observational research, but it gives me more faith in the association in that situation, and I may talk about it. So this is the difference between vegetable studies that are epidemiological and things like raw milk. If you guys have been following my content recently, you know that I've been talking about an epidemiology study that linked, that associated fish consumption with increased rates of melanoma. Let's use this one as another example here. Can I come up with a compelling narrative by which people who eat more fish may have an increased risk of melanoma? I really can't. Perhaps you can, you can put it in the comments. There's probably a healthy user bias there. The people that eat more fish probably believe that fish is healthy for them, and yet they're having an unhealthy complication, specifically increased rates of melanoma. So where might the healthy user bias or the unhealthy user bias be hiding in this epidemiology? I can't think of it, which makes me find this association quite compelling. And then we can say, and there are many plausible explanations for the reason that fish might increase the rates of melanoma, microplastics, PFASs, and things like heavy metals or PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, in the fish that could be worsening cancer rates, specifically melanoma. So this finding was really taken with a lot of disbelief and incredulity by the nutrition community. It was widely ignored because everyone knows that fish is so healthy because red meat is so bad for you. And I'm just laughing in the background thinking, you guys actually need to realize that this fish is not good for humans and this is a good indication of this. But I wish that most of this epidemiology were then followed up with interventional studies that's what we really need. We need more interventional studies to test whether the inclusion of vegetables in the human diet is actually beneficial for humans or not. We need more interventional studies to test whether meat is beneficial or harmful for humans. I've shown in this podcast many times that, there, that of the existing interventional studies we have, red meat looks to be very healthy for humans. No surprise there. It's what we've been favoring for our entire existence as humans. And we need more interventional studies to look at raw milk and see if it does protect humans for allergies and asthma. The problem is that some of these studies must be done longitudinally, which takes a long time. We need to figure out how to address that in human health and nutritional research because so many of these associations can be valuable, but we must be careful not to be fooled by healthy user bias and unhealthy user bias.